I tell him, and I always tell him since, since he got here, you know, this is between you and God. I, I'm just the one in charge of helping you become the best you that you can be. And, and that's all I can do. And so really paying attention to his cues. And even though Noah is completely dependent, he, <laughs> there, there are things I just, I can't make him do, right? which is really comical and people don't understand that. I said, he has a lot of autonomy. And if he wants to do something, he finds a way. And so we talk openly and, and he will, he will smile as part of his responses, he'll grimace. I mean, his, his nonverbal, his facial expressions, his body language, his, his grunts, or he'll, he's, he's been vocalizing a lot more lately and he'll repeat things. And so we continue to have the conversation. And, and one of the things that I do and that I have done since he was little I wanted to set him and I up for success and to be able to set us up for a day when one of us were not here. And so I have worked to have other people as I can. When he was younger, it was a lot easier. Now that he's bigger, it's a bit ch more challenging, but where he'll stay with others, whether it's family or a friend, and I'm gone, like if I have to go away for business, and to know that you will be loved and you will be taken care of if there's a day that mom doesn't come home. And I've had to set the same thing up for myself if there's the day comes when he's not with me. And so we live every day as it's our last. We make lots of memories. We laugh a lot. And that that's just how I how I've chosen to do this life, it's hard. <laughs> it is hard. It's challenging. Um, and not the physicality of it is hard. It's the systems that make it unbearable. But in wanting to make sure that Noah has a good life and he has a good quality of life and modeling what that looks like and that I have a life too.